Today, we're going to be talking about Chase Young's career and what's going on. I am going to preface this video by saying Chase is uh, is a lot faster than me, bigger than me, stronger than me, uh, could generally kick my ass. So I'm going to watch what I say on this video. If Chase ends up watching this, uh, dude, wish you would have stayed with us. Don't really know what's going on. What the hell is going on? Dude, your 2020 rookie season was crazy. Where? What is going on? But today, I am going to talk about how I think Chase Young might be the biggest draft bust in recent years. Chase Young was born April 14th, 1999 in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. From a young age, it seems like Chase was always into sports. I mean, obviously, I never saw him grow up. But from what I see on the internet, it seems like he was into it all the way up into high school when he attended DeMatha Catholic. So Young plays four years at DeMatha High School. He lights up the field. Everybody notices he's bigger, stronger, faster. And um, in 2015, Chase's junior year at DeMatha, they go 11-1, and one, and he racks up some pretty decent stats, landing him at the number one state-ranked defensive end and the fifth national-ranked defensive end. And during his three seasons with the Buckeyes, Chase Young went off. In 2019, Chase's junior year, he records a remarkable 16 and a half sacks in 12 games and breaks the single season record at Ohio State. That's the same college program that the Bosa Twins went to. So you're in pretty good company if you're competing with uh, two of the top defensive ends currently in the NFL. His disruptive play earned him the consensus All-American honors and the Chuck Bendardic, ben, Bednarik? Chuck Bednarik? The Chuck Bednarik Award. Bednarik? Oh, God. Chuck Bednarik. The Chuck Bednarik Award. That's how you say. He also won the Ted Hendricks Award, which is uh, pretty much certifying him as the best D-end in the entire nation. So. so after DeMatha and Ohio State, Young declares for the draft, and my team, the Washington Redskins at the time, in 2020 had the second overall pick. This is where we get to a part where I feel bad for Chase, okay? Now, you see, the Washington Redskins, Commanders, football team, whatever you want to call them, have a pretty long history of uh, some pretty shady stuff. Dan Snyder made a name for himself over the 24 years of owning a football team as pretty much one of the worst owners of all time. Now, I'm not saying that we like Jerry Jones, but uh, Dan kind of makes Jerry look like a good guy. You see, Dan has been accused of uh, swiping some passports from some team cheerleaders and pimping them out to some executives. Uh, so... Honestly, at the time of Chase getting drafted, we were amidst like the worst turmoil. I mean, we all hated Dan. We knew he was a piece of shit, but he was finally getting caught for some of the stuff that he did. And, uh, and you know, he's trying to cover his butt, change the name, and distract everybody from the fact that he's pimping out cheerleaders and uh, that kind of stuff. So we know Dan's a piece of shit, and uh, I'm not going to go into too much depth on that because this is a Chase Young video, not a Dan Schneider video. But no, leave a like if you guys do want to watch a video about Dan Schneider. I can make one of those. But back to Chase Young. So we draft him number two overall, 2020, and he comes out having a pretty remarkable rookie season. Despite all the off-field challenges and stuff going on, Chase Young comes out 2020, defensive rookie of the year, 44 tackles, seven and a half sacks, a couple forced fumbles, and he changed the way some of the games went for us. And when you pair him with three other first rounders like Montez Sweat, Deron Payne, and Jonathan Allen, it was getting really exciting to see where he was going to go year two and beyond. And I will say, as a Commanders fan, I've had some bad luck with jerseys. I don't know about you guys, but I've got a couple RG3 jerseys hanging. Uh, I mean, I even have a Donovan McNabb jersey from when I was way younger. I mean, it seems like everybody we get just sucks. 2021 season kicks off, and things are going as usual. We've got a crazy good D-line. Our team kind of sucks. We win some games, lose the other ones. And then Week 10 comes around. We play the Bucks. Taylor Heineke takes on Tom Brady once again. Up until this point, Chase only has two and a half sacks, so he really wasn't playing that good, but he was eating up a ton of double teams and some triple teams even. Having a guy out there like him allowed some of our other players to shine through, like Montez Sweat, Deron Payne got a contract, and John Allen got paid too. But week 10 comes around, his right knee blows out, and we've got a torn ACL on our hands, guys. What are we going to do? So only a couple weeks after injuring his right knee in week 10, Chase Young hits up the best in the business, Dr. Andrews. If you guys don't remember who Dr. Andrews is, he's the guy who helped Adrian Peterson come back from his torn ACL, and he put up 2,000 yards at 27 years old after tearing his. So with some of the best on our side, we had no worries about Chase Young coming back with a brace perhaps, but putting up some great numbers again in year three. So after working all offseason with Dr. Andrews to get that right knee right and talking to friends like Von Miller about how to work on his technique, a lot of people were expecting a big year out of him. There were rumors that Chase was going to be ready to go by week one, but as the season comes to fruition, he's not ready to suit up. 
And 14 games into the season, they finally decide to activate Chase Young, who doesn't really do much for the rest of the season. So after pushing it off for many, many weeks, they finally decide to activate Chase. And with only three games played for us in 2022, he racked up a total of three tackles, two assists for a combined of five tackles and one pass defended. A very disappointing follow up to a very disappointing follow up year. So in the fourth year of his rookie contract, Chase Young is not looking too hot. He's got a defensive rookie of the year under his belt, but he's also got an ACL injury and two bad seasons following that. Something that I may not have covered, and I'm not actually sure where it happens in the timeline of Chase Young, but there was a moment where he was criticized pretty heavily for not showing up to OTAs and some other team events because he was making that money. This also kind of gave the fans a bad taste because he's ha- he's got two years with a sack and a half and he's shaking ass for Under Armour rather than showing up to practice. So the 2023 season comes and Chase finally gets that brace off of his right knee. I even have a Snapchat of me at our training camp screaming, no brace Chase. No brace Chase! No brace Chase! No brace, Chase. Chase. Yes, sir! We healthy, baby! No brace Chase! Let's get it, sweat! Yeah! yeah. So needless to say, we're all pretty excited to see him get back to his former self. I mean, he was a generational talent at Ohio. So Chase doesn't play in the season opener, unfortunately, but we do win that and we head over to Denver and beat them too. Starting the season 2-0 was something we hadn't done in a long time and it was pretty big news for us fans and Chase already had a sack and a half in those two games. Things were finally starting to look like they were back on track and maybe our number two overall pick wasn't a waste. Unfortunately, we took a big L in week three and he didn't do much then but over the next four weeks he managed to nab three and a half sacks for himself this put him at five sacks for the year in only seven games and he was finally starting to produce the way we wanted him to now up until this point it wouldn't be strange to hear someone say that we might be trading chase young soon but it was more likely that we would get rid of somebody like montez sweat who was also up for a contract and a little bit older much to my demise we decide to deal both chase young and montez sweat to the 49ers and bears respectively on the same fucking game week and just decide that we're going to start Casey Tuhill, I guess, or something. Sorry, Casey, but come on, guys. But hey, I'm not salty, guys. I'm not salty. It's not a big deal. We're going to keep talking about Chase Young. It's a Chase Young video. But after being dealt to the 49ers, Chase does have a little bit of an impact with a half a sack on his first game. I will say as a Commanders fan, the thing that was really annoying about trading Chase Young was how the 49ers and their fan base essentially just changed their entire profiles to Chase Young fan pages. Now, don't get me wrong. I'd be excited too, coming from another team if I heard that there was a generational talent who's had a couple down years and has started to produce again this year. He's young. You know, whatever. It makes sense. He played with Bosa as well. So you got the Bosa and and Chase Young little Ohio State connection there. But my, oh my, were the Niners wrong. I mean, we can look at some of his stats and say that maybe he didn't do so bad, but let me play you some of these clips. Now it's Gibbs trying to get to the edge. Gets a block from the corner. Makes a man miss. Gibbs hits at the five. I'm not sure about football, but run. Why is he going so slow? It's a number two pick. He's supposed to be a franchise player. What are you doing? You see, over the next five weeks, Chase would only manage to nab one total sack and five total tackles. Are you kidding me? I mean, where's that speed? I mean, listen, guys, I know that he tore his ACL, but... He was supposed to have the best in the business. I mean, he's got lots of money in training, right? Like, trying to get to the edge. Gets a block from the corner. Makes a man miss. Kids, hits at the five. Come on, Chase. You're not even running. But lucky for Chase, him and his 49ers are still going to be going to the Super Bowl with or without his efforts. Honestly, I'm hoping for him to have a really good Super Bowl and possibly even win player of the game. But with his recent efforts, I doubt that he even gets a tackle. But as of right now, Chase Young might be the biggest recent bust in NFL history.